Hello. My name is Julius, and today we're going to be talking about deaf culture as well as some positives and negatives, pros and cons regarding deaf culture. You might be wondering, well, I want to participate and sometimes they may not invite you to participate. You might be blocked. Sometimes the community can be very tight-knit and some individuals might be part of what we call a clique. What does that mean? It means it's a tight-knit group and they exclude other people. So many people part of the deaf culture are that way and they don't accept newcomers to join their group. They might prefer people who are very skilled with sign language or maybe even some deaf people tend to sign at an advanced level. There are different levels and so they do prefer to exclude people on purpose. It's true. But don't feel insulted. If they don't have patience for new signers or for students. There are even some deaf individuals who are both deaf and they're excluded as well. It's the same thing as hearing culture. There's no difference. So in knowing that there are some rules and things about deaf culture. For those of you who are students and perhaps it might be your first time approaching a group like that, it's important to know a few things and I'll go ahead and go over those things. So the first thing I'd like to explain is not to stare at them if you see them signing and you're fascinated by sign language and so you just keep watching and staring. That's rude. That's a no-no. So you can glance over and take a look and if you happen to catch eye contact with the deaf person or the person signing, you could very friendly, in a friendly way, you could say, Hi, I'm an ASL student and I'm learning sign language. It is okay if I watch? And then they'll understand because sometimes it might be a private conversation. You don't know. And so they might not be comfortable with someone staring at their conversation. So be careful. Also, deaf people tend to keep eye contact with each other while they're talking, while they're signing. So we can watch for facial expressions. We can watch for different emotions. Sometimes I actually don't actually have to look at your hands and what you're signing to understand what you're saying. Right? You could be signing away and I could see the excitement on your face. And I'll be able to catch those signs without looking directly at them. But my eyes are still looking at your eyes. That tends to be a tendency of deaf culture, especially for those who are grown up in the deaf culture. They have the peripheral vision all the way off to the sides and they can catch those signs without you thinking they saw you signing. But yeah, yeah, they saw it way over to the side. Yes, they can. I want to let you know. Also, it's rude if you ask a deaf person, how much can you hear? How much can you hear? Can you hear a lot or can you just hear a little bit or what's the percentage of what you can hear? You asking that is very rude. That's a no-no. You don't do that. When a deaf person 
ask you, what, what was just said? And if you respond, oh, I'll tell you later. No, that's very rude. Because as a deaf person, I want to join and participate in the conversation now. Later means that I can't put in my two cents or my feedback or add something to the conversation. I'm being excluded. And so if you say you'll tell me later, that means you're excluding me. And it's the same feeling. So that's a no-no. Don't do that. So, like I said uh, a little while ago, uh, there are some biases in the deaf community. There are those people who are really tight-knit, they know each other, they have shared interests, they have shared ASL skills, they know the language fluently, we're at the same level, and who knows? When you approach them and you want to participate in the conversation because you just recently learned sign language and you feel that you can communicate and understand their signs, should they automatically accept you? Eh, it's doubtful. Sometimes, yes. It really does depend, you know. They're going to observe you. See, maybe you're open-minded. Maybe we have matched similar interests. There's a variety of reasons. There are social norms, and it's the same with the hearing world and other languages as well, when those people get together. They have the same culture, the same language. There's a variety of reasons why people tend to cluster together. But again, don't feel offended if they're not willing to let you participate or invite you to join their group. Understand that if you go to an ASL event, that most of the people there are actually students. And there are a few teachers that tend to mingle in the crowd. There's also some church groups. A variety of groups that are more than happy to give and help people to grow their ASL skills. Quite a variety. But you should look for perhaps a community event or something that's open to the public and you're invited so you feel more cooperation rather than just approaching a deaf person or a couple that's talking in the store or something like that. Be careful. Be cautious. Yes, you can. Kind of wave. Let them know that you are an ASL student. Hi. And if they look at you, they'll let you know and perhaps talk with you or perhaps just cut you off. It's their choice. Okay, but respect that decision and don't feel offended. Okay? Also, understand that, that not all deaf people are the same. They're not. Some deaf people can read lips. Some deaf people grew up in an oral environment. And yes, most are not and haven't grown up that way, but lip reading in itself, if you think that deaf people can do it, no. Actually, only 40% of what people are saying can actually be understood by those who have mastered lip reading skills. And it's still a maximum of only 40% that can be understood. Most of those things that are being said will go right over your head. And most deaf people aren't interested in trying to lip read. Why should I when I can sign? And if we can both sign, we can understand each other clearly. 
We don't have to depend on trying to guess work with reading lips. It's hard work. And there's so many words that look similar. And many people don't pronunciate clearly. Some people mumble and things of that nature. And so it's not clear what's being said on the mouth. So for you to have an expectation that a deaf person can lip read is a no-no. Most don't and don't ask them to read your lips. Okay? Also, don't assume that they can lip read as well. Also, you'll notice that people sometimes don't sign the same words the same way. Depending on where they went to school, they might have had a volunteer interpreter or maybe even an ASL student that helped to support them and their very lousy signers. But they thought to themselves it was better than nothing, so they did the best they could. And so that deaf person might have had to learn through a person who signed very English, perhaps um, C sign or PSE or ASL. Everybody grew up differently, and there's a variety of ways of signing, and their skills for sign language and communication uh, very greatly. So there's not one reason. Obviously, there's a lot of different reasons. Some may have gone to the school for the deaf, and so they're enriched with deaf culture and have very good signing skills, and they might not even be interested in the hearing world because they perhaps love their deaf world. Everyone understands each other so fluently and so well. And there's a lot of respect for each other. So it's different. Different backgrounds for different individuals, different upbringings. And so if you expect that they might understand, that's not always a good assumption. Also, you should know your sign language and expect and hope for some feedback, perhaps even some criticism. And you should be willing and open-minded for that feedback. Because of the fact that everyone learned to communicate differently and their understandings of a particular sign might be different than what your understanding of a sign is. You might say, well, my teacher taught me to sign it that way. It doesn't matter, okay? The way they sign it might be a new or improved way of signing it. Maybe their sign language might have something a little bit better in terms of the meaning. Do we necessarily agree on signs here in America? Just take a look at all the different sign language books different instructors are using, different people are using. It's the same thing with English language as well as other languages. It's going to evolve. It's the same thing with sign language. So be open-minded and be willing to learn a new way of signing something that you may have learned already, okay? Also, if a deaf person starts signing with you and you are missing a lot of information and you just nod like you understand what's going on, you think you're fooling them? Do you think that uh, they don't know you don't understand? You're just like a deer in the headlights to them. They can spot that so easily. If you don't understand, say you don't understand. Say, hold on, again, I don't understand. Ask them to repeat. They want you to be involved in the conversation. If you try to pretend that you understand and it goes right over your head, then your conversation with them might be over really soon, okay? So, please, be honest. Be honest with the person you're communicating with and let them know. 
If you need them to slow down, let them know to slow down or to repeat the information, okay? When you go to a deaf social gathering or event and you're hoping you might get some free tutoring, someone to teach you sign language, that's a no-no. If you go there to a social event, enjoy yourself. Look around and learn what you can. Bring your own notebook, take notes. And make notes for yourself. And try your best. Don't expect that they're going to teach you. If you say, hey, slow down, I don't understand. You're not in a classroom environment. Uh, the people there want to have a conversation at their normal fluid speed of conversation. They may not be interested in signing really slow and kind of being off track because we've got a student over here. So don't do that, okay? Be respectful and enjoy yourself and try to learn what you can if you have a friend with you, you can also take notes what it is you remember, what you saw in that sign language. You can either ask a friend later in your classroom or you can ask your instructor. You said, I saw something signed similar to this and the instructor there in that environment, a teaching environment, not in a social environment will be the right place for that, okay? So let's say you go to a deaf event and you're looking for a deaf person because you want them to give you a sign name. No. A sign name will develop naturally. It develops from the deaf person knowing you. Or an ASL person who knows you very well. They start to look at your tendencies, your personality, and then they give you a sign name from things that you're well known for, perhaps. For example, maybe you have really long hair. Or maybe you have really dangling earrings, for example. And some people might have a nose ring. Or some people might always have really brightly colored hair. There's a variety of reasons for example my father they gave him a sign name because he was always coughing a lot and hitting his chest like this and so his sign name became Jim and so there's different reasons that you might be given a sign name some people have initialized signs such as VA my name is with a J, Julius. Why did they give me that sign name? I don't know, but that was my parents' decision, and that's fine, so I'm Julius. So there's a variety of reasons, okay? But be patient and wait, and that will occur naturally. Do not seek it out. If you try to force someone to give you a sign name now, it won't fit you anyway. It won't fit your personality. So be patient. Interact. Be friends, okay? Also, do not try to teach other people sign language if you're still a student. If you're still a student yourself, you can share what you've already learned with other students. Classmates perhaps in the same class, sure, of course. But if you're trying to teach new people sign language, and you're teaching them something by mistake perhaps, they're going to pass that mistake all the way around, 
and that's not a good idea. If you see a deaf person, maybe let's say you went to the post office and you're in line and you see a deaf person at the front counter and you notice that that person is talking with the mail clerk by writing back and forth with each other and you notice that they're deaf and you thought, oh, well, you know, I can go up and perhaps I can interpret for them. That's a no-no. You can let them know that you are a student of sign language and you do know some basic signs, but do not assume that every deaf person is going to want your services. Many deaf people don't. We all like to feel independent and we like to control our own destiny and our needs. We don't want a person, a person approaching us expecting that we want to depend on them to meet our needs, okay? So you can wait and if that person invites you, do not invite yourself, okay? Understood? All right. If you see a deaf couple, perhaps, having a conversation with each other and you feel that you can interrupt, Hi! Hi! I'm uh, taking deaf studies. I'm a student and I'm learning about the deaf. I'm not deaf myself. I'm hearing, but I'm an ASL student. And you just interrupt them. They might look at each other, look at you, feel a bit awkward and even make them feel uncomfortable. So don't do that as well. You can wait for a natural pause in their conversation. Or if they invite you by you catching each other's eyes, but do not just stare at them rudely so they're forced to invite you or force them to look at you because of your behavior. You know the social norms. It applies the same to the deaf as it does to the hearing. So you can wait for the natural feeling of what feels right. And then you can approach and say hello at the right time. But do not interrupt. Okay. Well, that's all I have for now. For deaf culture etiquette. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to put those in the comments below. And look for future uh, discussions regarding this topic. Also, please subscribe and join us for more learning about deaf culture and sign language. Love you. Alright, bye bye.